see existential pain this is deep this is deep pain this isn't the kind of pain you cut your finger and and oh no i have pain you can remedy that you go buy some neosporin or something we're talking about <clears throat> or or what are some other examples you want to get gains you're trying to get gains like this right you can't but you're trying <clears throat> You can go to the gym, you can get a personal fitness, you can eat a bunch of protein shakes, make yourself sick, but you'll get gains, eat pizzas and butter and ice cream. Yeah, do that. I did that. That's how I know about it. When I was in my 20s, I had gains, but I didn't feel good. So those things, <clears throat> those are more uh, like worldly level uh, issues you're trying to solve. But I'm talking about existential pain. I'm talking about a pain inside that just you don't feel right. Something's off or chronic pain or chronic mental health imbalances, neurological imbalances. You got some cards dealt to you that nothing out in this world's gonna solve it. Been to healers and holistic modalities and plant medicine and all that had a little, you know, it did a little something, you felt good for a minute, but then boom, the existential pain comes back. And it creates inside this emotional chaos, this turbulence. You're super sensitive by nature. Your nervous system is just like really sensitive. That has its pros and cons, by the way. How do you, how do you get balance? See, that's what people want. You want to feel balance because that's the, the game of life, balance. And that's why I like Ayurveda. It's my favorite <coughs> healing science, Ayurveda. Second favorite is traditional Chinese medicine, but I like uh, Ayurveda. I studied it with a really, had a personal friend advanced doctor ayurvedic doctor in rishikesh when i was in india and man i just would ask him questions all the time you know and i'd get it because i was like a sponge because i cared about it other subjects i had add the doctors would say i'm like no i just don't care about that stuff i care about what i care about give me something i care about and i'll be gifted <laughs> but they want you to learn uh nonsense you know anyway so the, the schools for the most part so how do, how do you how do you here, look here's a good analogy about uh the ganga the ganga river um this ties in to how do you what do you do when you have existential pain <clears throat> man there's a lot of people that die in the ganga the ganga is no joke the ganga river in uh in india in the himalayas that river will swallow people up, especially in the rainy season. <clears throat> I almost got swallowed up because your your footing, you're you're standing. In the, it's very muddy, and all of a sudden it'll just sink. You lost your footing. <clears throat> a lot of times uh, when people uh, die, they do their. I love India in terms of. I want to die in India. They know what they're doing when it comes to death. They do certain rituals and things to help help the soul or the consciousness or the ethereal body whatever name you want to give it it helps it trans transition you see those those who don't have a, a solid uh, foundation of self-realization to, to some degree when you die like their spirit will still be hovering around the body or their soul will still you know because it's like that movie sixth sense did you see that with Bruce Willis, Indian director? Yeah, of course, he knows about this stuff. And he showed that little kid was gifted and he, the little kid told Bruce Willis, he's like, I see all these dead people walking around, but they don't know they're dead. Turned out Bruce Willis was one of them and it was great, the end. Bruce Willis, he got it, he found, because it's like when you're dreaming, you know, when you have dreams, everything kind of makes sense, even though it's really illogical. And Bruce Willis kept, uh, he would kept going home to his wife, even though he was dead. And it just kind of made sense. They didn't even talk. He never, never occurred to him like, well, this is weird. We're not even talking. No, he's in the dreamy, dreamy state. You see? So that's what happens. That's what happens when you, uh, if you're not, um, if you still have too much karma that's binding you to this physical realm you can't recognize the subtle the subtle realm which is what you're going to be in when this body dies all right so the point of saying that is because in india there's rituals that <clears throat> the people do for the person that died that helps them transition it gives them energy which then gives the uh the soul clarity to kind of recognize like well i'm in the subtle realm i left the body okay cool 
I'm going to sail on to where I'm supposed to be now. It goes to its corresponding uh, realm based on its vibration, level of consciousness. And so these, these um, uh, rituals help, help with that. Even if they don't do the rituals, you're going to end up there. But this makes it a little better, a little faster. <laughs> anyway, that's why I wanted to... I like India in that, in that sense. There's always duality. I lived there for five years. I don't think I could live there again. The conditions are pretty rough. And <clears throat> digestive tract, yeah, it's a little rough. Um, what are we talking about? What's this, what's, uh, oh, escaping, ex okay, the Ganga River, right, the Ganga River. So there's a lot of people die in this Ganga. And um, there's whirlpools. So you'll be, like I said, you'll just be standing there. Ah, but I didn't finish the other. See all these little things I go off on? There's a lot of people when they die, they do the ceremony and rituals in the Ganga. My, there was a, a guy I was renting the house from when I was there, like 20 years ago or something. He, um, he was doing a, cer a ritual that night and got swooped by the Ganga and died. He was doing a ceremony for a guy that died and he ends up dying. And I wondered what was going on because like three in the morning, man, I just heard all this uh, crying, deep crying. And in the morning, everybody was sitting outside. There's like 20 people. I went and saw my Indian teacher. He said, it sounds like he died. So the Ganga has these whirlpools and they'll just suck you under. It's not like the ocean. The ocean pulls you out. Ganga sucks you under. And so here... It sounds nice, right? In theory, what I'm about to say, but when it comes time to the actual moment, yeah, I don't, I don't know, you know. And here's what it is. And this is how this applies to how you get rid of existential pain. When the whirlpool starts pulling you under, you don't try to escape it. You don't fight it. Because if you panic, as you know, you lose your energy and then you're really going to die. You can't fight a whirlpool. <laughs> so what you do is you let the whirlpool take you takes you under and then after a little bit theoretically <clears throat> it spits you back up you see you go through it you surrender to it because you can't beat it anyway now it sounds nice on paper but again if we're in the actual moment you know let's see what happens this is what we got to do with existential pain and super highly highly charged emotion emotional like um upheaval and some experience that more than others that's the thing there's a lack of compassion and understanding in today's world when it comes to sensitive nervous systems and you can say mental health imbalances do people they're just like well, just meditate man like what's wrong like i do i used to feel a little depressed and now i meditate and i'm everything's yeah they don't understand there's some people's karma their neurology is not functioning right and they feel super alone on top of that they have really intense symptoms but the way out of it is through it. It's not, it's not around it or escape it. You see, the, the, the latest escape now is spiritual, spiritual escape. I got to find a spiritual technique. I got to find a guru that can help, like, uh, <clears throat> escape me, you know, help me escape from this. It doesn't work. Yeah, I tried it for years. It doesn't work. You got to go through it. You got to go through it, and then you, did I make the video? I think I uploaded it already, the, uh, the video that says, keep your attention on God. This is the practice. You have to surrender your life and understand this is what you're here to do. You're here to transcend heavy limitations. You have a motivation that uh, <clears throat> other people don't have because of these cards you've been dealt. They're intense. See, don't compare yourself to others. Why me? Why, why don't, don't they understand all that? No, say, I'm here to transcend this karma and limitation. And then how do you do that? You keep your attention on God, which is in you, outside you, everywhere. How do you keep your attention on God? What does that look like? Allow that to be revealed to you. Ask God to give you the, show you how to do that. What do you, what, what do I got to do? Like, I want to keep my attention on the source, but I don't know how to do it. Like, what is, how do I do it? My mind's making so much noise and my emotions are bothering me so bad and the agitations in my physical 
existence is heavy and like, well, how do I do this? Yeah, that's your prayer. Instead of asking a teacher or asking me, ask, ask to the Supreme and ask in a humble way. You, 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 this is your practice. Most can't do it. I had a mentor when I was like 23 and he, um, I would call him with the problem. He'd say, hang up the phone first and then go talk to God about it and then call me and see, because he was trying to get me. I had, he, he knew he couldn't talk to me if I'm just stuck in my mind. There's nothing, his, his answers were spiritual, but he couldn't give them to me because I couldn't assimilate them if I'm on the same level as the problem. So he's trying to tell me, like, trying to help me have some kind of con contact, some connection with the source, so then we could start from there. If we can't start from there, we can't really do much, you know? People like that, then you need to just come to satsang or come somewhere and just sit. You just sit and absorb the vibration. Vibration and frequency and quality of consciousness, actually, this is what changes somebody. This is what, it's not that you're going to hear some technique and then that's going to like fix everything. No, that's not going to happen. There's an alchemy that goes on inside, an inner alchemy that's responsible for producing a shift that nobody else can do. No teacher, nobody, nothing. This shift comes from, uh, from grace. The best, most conducive way that, or thing you can do to help facilitate that is be in high vibration. So this is the benefit of a satsang or a good uh, high quality church group. I don't know of any, but I think they're out there. Something, you need higher, higher frequency. And then little by little, you'll come out of this, um, this kind of dark soup mess that you feel there's no other way you, you, you can't like how are you going to beat it you can't beat it intruders are coming because uh you know they are so we, we'll get by them and then forge ahead and see they got a dog how you doing hey, hey. <laughs> hi intruders all right I think I said enough to actually, 12 minutes and 30 seconds. Anybody that tries to give you an answer or a technique that's gonna, like, this is all you gotta do, man. This, you do this and it's gonna balance all your emotions and you're gonna, you're gonna like be spiritual. Like it's not gonna work. But you might have to try that a bunch of times to see. The mind wants a quick fix. It's like, uh, understandably, Understandably, it's like if you're getting bit by a hundred ants, you want a quick fix. You don't want somebody to tell you, oh, just, you know, surrender and you trust that there's going to be a shift, but, but be patient. <laughs> you see, you want the damn ants off you. It's the same thing. So I understand. <clears throat> I do have compassion for that. At the same time, I have to share the real solution, though. The real solution is that you surrender, that you can't do anything about it. On practical level, though, you do what you can do a good diet, a clean diet, you know, clean com company and all, all that helps. But the real deal is the shift. It's not like, do I got I got to do more fasting? Ah, that's what I tried. I, I just hurt myself doing so much water fasting. And then you know what I did? I said, ah, well, this ain't working. Maybe I should do dry fasting, right? I would dry fast every week, three, four days. Trying to find the external thing oh maybe i need to be breath there in. ah then i'll be so pure then uh, yeah no the, the 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 real antidote is when god kisses you but you can't make him do that all we can do is be willing and open to allow that to happen i like that hymn the yogananda nuns saying it it says uh i'm not going to try to sing it i don't have singing skills. Remember I told you guys in the last video, I had a desire to sing when I was 22 and I went to the class and then they told me, the teacher wanted me to say meow meow to open up my vocal cords and I didn't want to, so I left. So, but the hymn says, uh, door of my heart. You can, you can see it on YouTube and uh, it's a Bengali chant and, uh, door of my heart, open wide, I keep for thee. See, it's willing. I'm keeping it as open as I can. 
just I, I, I might get the verses confused but it's all good open wide I keep for thee wilt thou come wilt thou come just for once come to me night and day night and day I look for thee night and day you see you see that's the prayer that's that's what we got to be willing to do to receive you can say the highest darshan from the universe itself is we have to first recognize that only the universe can give us that number one and number two be willing to receive it as best as we can and then when you do when you do feel some <clears throat> this is important when you do feel some tidbits of peace honor that and be grateful for that see the mind will take that peace and then go piss it away like i used to oh i feel good now I'm going to get back to uh, serving my ego's projections. and oh, I'm going to use this charisma. I'm going to go out and put it on the girls and get hits of validation. You see, that's another trap. So we're here on this channel to um, not create guilt or shame, but to discuss and <clears throat> reveal all these ways of how the ego plays and keeps us stuck. So I hope you got something from that. I'll see you.